Hello, my name is Andre Kozma and I'm with Analog Devices. Today I will talk about efficient motor control solutions, in particular high performance servo control. Let's start by looking at today's agenda. To begin with, we'll talk about motor control applications and target markets, followed by a short introduction into motor control strategies, feedback sensors and circuits and isolation. Afterwards, I'll present the high performance servo control FMC board that ADI has developed and I'll show you how this board can be used together with Xilinx FPJs and Simulink from Metworks to develop high performance motor control systems. The objectives of the presentation are to provide an insight into the operation of electric motor drive systems and show where ADI technology adds value to the system and also give you an understanding of motor control strategies and the challenges of designing efficient motor control applications. Let's start by looking at motor control applications and target markets. As you may very well know, electric motors are used in a wide range of applications. They can be found in industrial environments, medicine, transportation, automotive, communications and household appliances. But all of these motors would be rather useless if there wouldn't be some systems that could control their operation. Such systems are called motor drives. What they do is that they vary the motor electrical input power to control the shaft torque, speed or position. Depending on the type of application that the drives are designed for and depending on the complexity of the drive, the update and the accuracy of the drive, they can be classified into different categories. The simplest types of drives are the application specific drives that are designed to run a specific motor in a specific application. They are followed by the standard drives which are general purpose and are capable of running a variety of motors within a given power range. The server drives deliver accurate and high dynamic control of position speed or torque down to zero speed. They are typically used in automation applications. The most complex type of drives are the high performance servos. They are designed to deliver best in class accuracy and connectivity. They are typically used in CNC and pick and place machines. For all of these types of drives, ADI has to offer solutions in terms of isolation, measurement, sensors interfaces, transceivers, power, and also on the controller side. For the high end servos and CNC, ADI partners with FPJ vendors like Xilinx to offer high performance motor control solutions. Today's market trend is to save energy and when you look at the fact that more than 40% of the global energy is consumed by motors we can see that any increase in the efficiency of the motor controller can lead to high gain in terms of energy saving and an increase in terms of the drive's performance means that it is required to have new performing technologies on all the components which are used inside the motor drive, meaning converters, amplifiers, processors, isolation, power and interfaces. And also this makes room for new technologies like the FPGAs to be used more and more inside motor drive systems. This is due to the fact that the FPGAs, because of their high processing power, can implement more complex control algorithms that can run in real time and that can provide higher controller update rates, higher control accuracy and thus better control and an increased efficiency. Let's have a look at the control strategies that are available for different types of motors. The easiest type of motor to control is a brushed DC motor. Here all that needs to be done is to vary the DC supply and the motor speed will follow the applied voltage. One technique to vary the DC supply is called pulse width modulation or PWM. Here constant amplitude voltage pulses of varying width are provided to the motor. The wider the pulse the more energy is transferred to the motor. If the frequency of the pulses is high enough then the motor's inductance will average them and the motor will run smoothly. The simple circuit that can be used to control the speed of a brushed DC motor consists of a single transistor and a diode. The motor speed is proportional to the transistor on duty cycle. 
The drawback of such a circuit is the fact that only for motoring is possible. It is not possible to reverse the direction of rotation of the motor and is not possible to achieve dynamic braking. In order to achieve full control of a brushed DC motor, an edge bridge power circuit is used. This enables forward quadrant control of the motor, meaning that forward and reverse motion on braking are possible. The brushless DC motors are three-phase motors and they are controlled using what is called a three-phase inverter which is used to control the switching sequence for the three phases of the motor. In order to be able to control such a motor, it is always necessary to know the exact position of the rotor. For this, all effect sensors are used to detect the rotor position. Based on the rotor's position, six switching segments can be identified as shown in the figure on the slide. Depending on the type of motor, either star or delta, the switching sequence for the three phases is a little bit different. For example, for star connected motors, for any one segment, two windings will be in the flat top portion of the back EMF and the third winding will be switching between a positive and negative output. The controller leaves one winding open circuit and connects one winding to the lower DC rail and controls the voltage applied to the third winding using PWM. The field factor of the applied PWM controls the speed of the motor. In the case of a delta connected motor, for any one segment, the windings are connected to the positive voltage supply and the third winding is connected to the negative voltage supply. Also here, the field factor of the applied PWM controls the speed of the motor. For brushless DC motors, is it possible to achieve sensorless control, meaning that using the information related to the zero crossings of the back EMF for each phase, it is possible to detect the rotor's position without using the whole sensors. The benefits of the sensorless control are lower system cost and increased reliability. This is due to the fact that the whole sensors are eliminated, this reduces the cost and also increases the reliability because there are no more mechanical parts involved. But there is also a drawback to sensors control because of the fact that back EMF zero crossings can be reliably detected at low motor speeds. And this means that the controller needs to handle these special cases. And this increases the complexity of the controller. AC motors have been around for a while and they are the most widely used type of motors in the industry. For this, many control algorithms have been developed for them. The simplest control algorithm is called the volts per hertz control. This actually tries to keep a constant ratio between the frequency and the voltage that is applied to the motor, which actually translates to constant flux. Improvements over the volts per hertz control are the sensor vector control and the flux vector control. The best control available for AC motors is called field oriented control. Here the machine flux and torque are controlled independently. The main advantage of this type of control is the fact that it applies equally well to DC motors and AC motors and is the reason why DC-like performance can be demonstrated using field oriented control on AC drives. Here we have a block diagram of such a controller. From the block diagram we can see that the feedback signals required by such a controller are the current measurements on two phases of the motor and the rotor flux angle, which can be either measured using a sensor mounted on the motor or can be computed using the motor's model. By using a series of transforms, it is possible to switch between different coordinate systems and to translate the measured values from the stator coordinate system to the rotor coordinate system. This is done by using the forward and inverse Park and Clark transforms. Two controllers, which are PI or PID, are used to independently control the torque and the flux. Using a technique called space vector modulation, it is possible to directly transform the command values into switching states for the three-phase inverter, which is 
providing power to the motor. Now let's have a look at the sensors and circuits that are available for measuring motor, current and speed for position. In order to measure the motor currents, a few techniques are available. The simplest one is to use what is called a shunt resistor. This is actually a resistor that is placed in series on the motor leads. The voltage drop across the resistor is proportional to the current drawn by the motor. The advantages of it are the facts that it's linear, it has a wide bandwidth and zero offset. The drawbacks are the facts that it's non-isolating and it has power loss at high currents. The current transformer, on the other hand, is isolating, but it works only for AC and it has poor linearity at low current. The whole effect, current sensor, is isolating, works for DC and is less expensive than the current transformer, but is non-linear and it has zero offset. An improvement over the whole effect current sensor is the nulling whole effect sensor, which retains all the advantages of the whole effect current sensor and it has better linearity, but is more expensive and it has zero offset. In order to detect the speed of a motor, it is possible to use AC or DC tachometers. These are permanent magnet generators that produce a voltage which is proportional to speed. The AC tachometer output frequency is also proportional to speed. Whole encoder and whole absolute position encoders can be used to detect the rotor angle. They are typically used by brushless DC motors which require low resolution feedback in order to properly generate the commutating sequence of the motor windings. In order to precisely detect the shaft angle, it is possible to use optical encoders or resolvers. Optical encoders with precision pattern printed on a glass disc provide very high resolution shaft position and speed data. Resolvers generate sine and cosine relative to position. They are the analog counterpart of the rotary encoder. Sensorless control tries to eliminate mechanical speed and position sensors by calculating feedback signals from other information. They are often used for rotor position estimation in PMSM or brushless DC motors. And they are very useful in estimating rotor flux position in AC motor field oriented control. The available techniques are vacuum F detection to estimate rotor position in brushless DC motor control or rotor angle detection based on motor model using measured phases, currents and voltages. But there are a few drawbacks to sensorless control and this comes from the fact that the motor model and parameters vary over time and temperature and usually special techniques are required to handle low speed or zero speed and startup. And also more processing power is required in the controller because it has to compute the rotor position or speed based on the motor model or on uh, another type of information that is received from the system. Isolation is a very important aspect in any motor control application. This is due to the fact that the voltages that are used to power the motors are usually dangerous for both the control system and the user. We can have two types of isolation, functional and safety isolation. Functional isolation protects electronic control circuits from damaging voltages, while safety isolation protects the user from the dangerous voltages. As isolation options, we can isolate power circuits from the control and user I.O. circuits or we can isolate both the power and control circuits from user I.O. circuits. The first option is commonly used in noisy high power systems and is required when there is high bandwidth communications between the control and communication process. The second option is used in low power systems and it simplifies signal isolation when there is limited communication between the control and the user. Here in this diagram we can see a complete motor control system with the inverter which is driving the motor and afterwards the control system on the bottom. From, from the inverter we have feedback signals related to current measurements and also to uh, motor speed which is measured through an encoder.
The current measurements are done using isolated ADCs, which provide isolation on the current feedback path, and the speed is speed isolation is done using isolating isolating circuits. Also, from the control system, there are signals that are going back to the inverter to control the PWM of the of the inverter and all these signals also need to pass through isolating devices in order to to protect the control system from the dangerous voltages isolation is also required on the communication lines because also on these communication lines it is possible that dangerous voltages appear and they can uh, prove to be damaging to, to the control system. So, in conclusion, it is very important to have isolation on the feedback path, on the control path, and on the communication path of the control system in order to make sure that the control system is fully protected from dangerous voltages that can appear. And now let's have a look at the high performance of a control FMC solution that ADI has to offer. Due to the fact that there is an increasing demand in for higher efficiency motor drive systems, FPGAs are becoming more and more popular for motor control. FPGAs offer wider integration capabilities, meaning that in a single chip they can integrate more than just the controller, but also various peripherals like high speed industrial communication or HMI. This leads to an overall cost reduction because one chip can now implement the functionality of multiple multiple chips. Also, due to the fact that FPGAs have parallel processing capabilities, higher performance and reduced latency, they can implement more sophisticated control algorithms in real time, they can reduce the control response time and thus increase the system efficiency. FPGAs are used in a large number of industry fields for efficient motor control in applications like industrial servos and drives, medical diagnostics, or efficient drives for transportation. The purpose of the system is to provide an efficient motor control solution for different types of electric motors. It wants to address power and isolation challenges which are encountered in motor control applications, provide accurate measurements of motor feedback signals like currents, voltages or speed feedback. Due to the fact that the solution is able to be interfaced with FPGAs, it provides increased control flexibility and increased versatility to be able to control different types of electric motors. The added value of the solution comes from the fact that it shows how to put all the puzzle pieces together and how to integrate hardware for power, isolation, measurement and control and how to interface this hardware with Xilinx FPGAs and Simulink from networks. The ADI FMC High Performance Servo Solution consists of two separate boards, a controller board and a drive board. The controller board is compatible with all Xilinx FPGA platforms with FMC low pin count or high pin count connectors. It contains 2 GB Ethernet files for high speed industrial communication. It has all differential hole encoder and resolver interfaces. By using a high precision analog front end, it is able to measure the analog feedback signals related to current and voltages that are received for the motor drive board. The current and voltage measurements are done using isolated ADCs. It also has an interface for the Xilinx 7 series X ADCs. The control and feedback signals are fully isolated, protecting the FPGA board to which it connects. The motor drive board is capable of driving brushless DC, PMSM, brush DC and stepper motors up to 48 volts and 18 amps. It has integrated over current protection. Current sensing is done through current sense registers that are placed on the board. Currents can be measured using the ADCs that are placed on the board or analog feedback signals can be sent back to the control board. The analog feedback signals are related to the total current, the phase currents and the, and the DC bus voltage. 
PGAs are used to maximize the current measurement input range so that always the analog feedback signals that are sent to the controller board fall into the maximum measurement range of the ADC. The back EMF zero cross detection circuitry is present on the board for sensorless control of PMSM or brushless DC motors. And here we can see a block diagram of the FMC controller board. On the right side of the board we can see the various connectors that are present on the board. So we have two RJ45 connectors for Ethernet interface, hall, encoder, differential hall and resolver connectors. We can also see the connector which is used to interface the controller board and the drive board. So this connector digital and analog signals are exchanged between the boards. Examples of digital signals are motor PWM control signals a signal which enables the motor driver which is located on the drive board and a feedback signals for fault conditions that can arise on the drive board. The analog feedback signals received from the drive board consist of phase, current values, the total current value and the DC bus voltage value. These analog signals pass through a signal conditioning stage and afterwards they are digitized using isolated AD7401 sigma delta modulators. The digitized current and voltage signals are passed to the, uh, to the FPGA afterwards. All the digital signals pass through digital isolation blocks implemented using the AD7640. Due to the fact that the voltage levels on the FMC connectors can vary between 1.8 to 3.3 volts, all the digital signals that are exchanged between the FPGA and the controller board pass through voltage translation blocks implemented using the bidirectional ADG3301 voltage translator. This allows seamless connection of the controller board to any FPGA board regardless of the FMC voltage values. And here we can see a block diagram of the low voltage drive board. On this block diagram we can depict the reverse voltage and the overcurrent protection blocks. We can also see the MOSFET drivers and the MOSFET half bridges that are used to implement the motor driver. Current sensing is done using current sense resistors. Current measurement can be done in two ways, either using the integrated AD7403 isolated sigma delta ADC that digitizes locally the current values and sends to the controller board digital signals, or the current values that are taken from the current sense registers can be passed through some signal conditioning stages and the voltages are amplified to a plus minus 5 voltage range and afterwards sent to the controller board as analog signals to be digitized by the analog front end which is present on the controller board. Here we can also see the back EMF sense circuitry which actually detects the zero crossings of the back EMF and sends this feedback to the, to the controller board. In order to achieve efficient motor control, it is mandatory to have high quality power sources, reliable power control and feedback signals isolation, as well as accurate currents and voltage measurements and high speed interfaces for control signals to allow fast controller response. Here we can see a list of some of the major parts that have been used on the drive and controller boards for measurement, power, isolation and voltage translation. Let's have a closer look at the features of some of these parts. The AD7400A and the AD7401A are isolated second order sigma delta modulators that are used to directly measure the small voltages present on the current shunt resistors. They have a plus minus 250 millivolts differential analog input range. They are ideal for motor control and DC to AC inverters, shunt resistor current feedback sensing and isolated voltage measurement. The AD8207 is a zero drift high voltage bidirectional difference amplifier. It is used to amplify the small voltages that 
can be found on the current sense resistors. It has a high common mode voltage range and a 90 dB common mode rejection ratio. It can be used in applications like high side current sensing in motor control, engine management or DC to DC converters. The ADM5000 is an isolated DC to DC converter and it is used to provide isolated power to all the digital and analog isolation chips. It has a regulated 5.3 volts or 5 volts output. The ADP1614 is a step up PWM DC to DC switching converter. It has an input voltage range of 2.5 volts to 5.5 volts and an adjustable output voltage range of up to 20 volts. The ADI SIM power voltage regulator design tool allows the design of the power circuit in a very easy fashion. All you need to do is just input the values of the input and output voltages and the tool will generate automatically the schematics on the BOM for the power circuit containing the ADP1614. The ADM7640 is a 6 channel digital isolator that is used to isolate all the digital signals on the controller board. It can work either as 3.3 volts or 5 volts. It can provide level translation from 3 volts to 5 volts and it has a very high uh, output rate of t up to 25 megabits per second. The ADG3308 is an 8 channel bidirectional logic level translator that is used to adapt between the FMC voltages and the controller board voltages. It is bidirectional, it doesn't have a direction pin which makes it very easy to use. Let's have a look now at how the ADI High Performance Servo FMC platform can be used with Xilinx FPGAs and Simulink. The High Performance Servo Development Platform is targeted for all Xilinx FPGA boards that have an FMC, LPC or HPC connector. Together with the hardware, we provide reference designs showing brushless DC, motor, speed and torque control. The controllers are modeled in Simulink and afterwards using HDL coder from Metworks and the Xilinx system generator, they are translated into HDL code ready to be transferred to the FPGA. Chipscope is used for internal signals monitoring and also for controlling different aspects of the system. Here we can see a block diagram of everything that is implemented inside the FPGA. Inside the FPGA we have HDL blocks which correspond to hardware blocks from the ADI motor control board. So we have a 6 state motor driver which actually generates the PWM signals needed for the isolated gauge driver. We have SYNC3 filters which generate the ADC codes from the signals received from the isolated sigma delta modulators. We have back EMF and hole position detectors which detect the position of the rotor's shaft from the back EMF zero crossing detectors implemented in the hardware and also from the hole sensors which are mounted on the motor. The motor controller is generated in Simulink and transferred in the FPGA. Chip scope, the chip scope blocks are used for internal signals monitoring and also for controlling some parameters of the system. The first design that we are providing shows speed control for a brushless DC motor. A PID controller is implemented to generate the PWM signals required by the six state motor driver. The PID controller uses as input the error between a reference speed and the actual speed of the motor. The implementation flow of the controller is as follows. First, we design and tune the motor controller in Simulink using the Xilinx block set. Afterwards, we generate the HDL netlist for the Simulink motor controller using Xilinx system generator. The motor controller HDL netlist is afterwards integrated in our ISC speed control reference design. Here we can see the model of the controller that is implemented in Simulink. There are three major blocks which are the speed computation, the PID controller and the edge detection. All of these blocks, if we look inside them, we can see that they are implemented using the Xilinx block set. 
The speed computation actually takes the raw data from the from the hardware and uh, computes the speed in RPM. The PID controller computes the command values for the 6 day motor driver and the edge detection block is used just to detect when a new speed information is available so that the controller has to update its output. Here we have a detailed view of the implementation flow. So first we generate the simulating model afterwards using Xilinx system generator. The simulating model is transferred to an AGL netlist that can be integrated in our ISC project. The ISC project is afterwards transferred to the FPGA and using ChipScope it is possible to monitor what's happening inside the system. So here in this picture we can see the current measurements, we can see the speed measurements and we can see different values of uh, some parameters inside the system. Also from here it is possible to change the parameters of the PID controller to start to stop the motor and to select the motor type either star or delta so that the control algorithm adapts according, accordingly. The second reference design shows Russia's DC motor speed and current control. In this case Two controllers have been implemented, a PI speed controller and a PID current controller. The speed controller takes as input the, dif the difference between a reference speed and the actual speed of the motor and generates a current reference. The current controller takes as input the difference between the current reference and the total current measured on the motor and generates the PWM signals needed by the six state motor drive. In this case, the implementation flow is as follows. First, we design and tune the motor controller in Simulink using Simulink native blocks. Afterwards, we generate the HDL code for the motor controller using the HDL coder. The code generated by HDL coder is used to replace in the Simulink model the motor controller with Xilinx black boxes. Afterward, using Xilinx system generator, we generate the HDL netlist for the Simulink motor controller. And afterwards, the motor controller HDL netlist is integrated into our ISC speed and torque control reference design. Here we can see our Simulink model with red. We have marked the speed and torque controller Simulink model and with blue, the motor cross drive Simulink model. If we look inside the controller blocks, we can see that everything is implemented using Simulink native blocks. By using HDL coder, all of these blocks are translated to HDL. The HDL is taken and integrated into Xilinx black boxes which are used to replace the original controller blocks. This step is not mandatory but the advantage of doing it is the fact that this way we can simulate in simulating the behavior of the HDL and we'll know how the HDL will behave in the, uh, when it's transferred into the actual system. Here's again a detailed view of the flow. So first we design and we implement our model using Simulink native blocks. Afterwards using HDL coder. For each controller block we generate the corresponding HDL. The corresponding HDL is integrated into Xilinx black boxes which are used to replace the original controller blocks. Afterwards, using Xilinx system generator, we generate the HDL netlist which is integrated into our ISC project and from there we transfer the project to the FPGA. Again, using ChipScope, we can monitor and control what's happening inside the system. In conclusion, we can say that the ADI High Performance Server Development Platform showcases a full motor control solution that shows how to integrate all the necessary hardware components for efficient motor control in one system. The FPGA interfacing capabilities provide a high degree of flexibility in developing high performance motor control algorithms. By using the Metwork simulation and development tools, High performance controlled algorithms can be developed and simulated on the PC and transferred directly into the FPGA. 
the ADI motor control reference designs provide a starting point for developing enhanced motor control algorithms using Metworks and Xilinx FPGAs. Any questions that you might have related to motor control solutions or to ADI products, you can post them on the ADI Engineer Zone support community, which is easy.analog.com. Here, ADI engineers will answer in the shortest possible time your questions related to the ADI products. To download the motor control reference designs and documentation, visit the ADI wiki, which is wiki.analog.com. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to address them now. Thank you.